Hello dear students, welcome to the lecture 7 of uh, Introduction to Programming with C Sharp course. Uh, so today we are going to see the topics here and let's start with a new project. I'm going to compose a new uh, C Sharp.net core VPF project here as you can see and let's select our uh, folder project folder okay lecture 7 all right so okay let's start with combo boxes of vpf So combo boxes are used to uh, provide selection to the users and uh, get the feedback of the user as selected option. Okay. I will show you what I mean. Okay. So our screen is here and uh, one moment. Okay, uh, so uh, let's add a combo box from our uh, toolbox. It is here. Okay, so we have got our combo box here. Let's give a name to it so that we can access it from uh, background code. Okay, uh, about what we should make a combo box, let's say. Um, for example, uh, user titles, okay. It will be related to your uh, homework project as well. I mean semester project as well. And I am going to initialize it at the beginning of the software so to do that i am going to write a simple method you know this is also a method and this method will be uh, void which means it will return nothing by the way in the following several lectures we are we are going to learn more about methods and methods are extremely important we were already using them uh without uh, explicitly being aware for example this is also a method this is a method call of the main window class which is here and so this method will return nothing therefore i am going to write void uh, it will be by default private and i'm going to write it as well so private and i will call it as init uh, user out combo box so it will take no parameters and what it is going to do is it will add items to the combo box okay add so let's say select user uh, authority level and let's add the authority levels so it will be it will have a guest and it will have a student and it will have assistant and lectures okay so if i run the application like this we will see nothing in our combo box do you know why i will uh, show you what i mean okay you see it is empty no items because 
we didn't call our method we have to call our method to uh, get it run okay get it executed so to call it i am typing like this it takes no parameters you see i didn't provide any parameter and here it takes no parameters so if i put a breakpoint here i can uh, see how it, how will it be uh, called and executed okay so you see no window has appeared yet because it is still in the uh, main window class uh, main window uh, method call and to get inside this method call our method i'm going to use step into and now you see my uh, breakpoint uh, or let's say our currently executed line is here and now i will continue with step over so when i hover my mouse over cmb user titles our combo box you see it has okay this is the visualizer i will just check its uh, items from here and let's get to the items has items okay you see it is false it has no items and okay there is item binding it is advanced stuff okay there is items and when i click items you see count is zero i continue this line will add the first item as string okay it's added and this will add the second item and when i hover my mouse again now i can see how many items it has you see now it has items this attribute is now set true and when i check the items from uh, here okay so you see it shows it has two items and can i see items from here non-public members okay from here uh, you see these are private uh, values of the combo box of my object and from items okay it is harder to see anyway now i am going to add all of the items and after that my uh, window will appear and when i now click you see now i can select my items in uh, my combo box okay so uh, let's uh, give it a bit bigger height uh, i mean the width and let's make the default selection as like the selected index equals to zero okay so when i run it now you will see the first uh, index is selected the first item is selected you see it is selected and like this okay so uh, as next i am going to use the selected item value to do that uh, i am going to add a button and this button will be named as median uh, show selected uh, item value okay so what i'm going to do is i will use a switch case Uh, let's name it as show selected user authority level so we will give levels to the authority okay let's compose a click event for it from here so this is also a method like this this is the method we have written this is the method automatically generated the difference of this method is it takes two uh, objects you see object as sender sender is being here the uh, button and this is being the event that triggered this uh, method okay 
don't uh, try to understand them at the moment and uh, but however this is also a method so when i click uh, to this uh, button the click event method is being called when i change uh, the uh, let's say combo box it doesn't trigger any events okay however i can also add events to do changing we will see them in the future okay so uh, what is this going to do is i am going to use switch okay so switch you can use proper uh, code snippet when i click top top it will generate the basic structure of the switch so the switch takes an input it can be anything it can be object it can be string it can be integer it can be float whatever the uh, type you want okay so this switch will take my combo box selected uh, item uh, to string okay so the selected item can be an object therefore i am going to convert it to a string currently our uh, combo box uh, includes only strings uh, therefore uh, this should also work you can also use selected value like this um, okay selected value is also a sit, uh, sitting therefore you have to use two string as well however i will use selected item and if you wonder what is the difference between uh, selected item and value let's just open a answer okay let's make it uh, english what is it okay okay here someone has asked it okay this is uh, related to more advanced stuff when dealing with data binding onto a combo box you can set up that value member property which corresponds to the property of whatever your binding to that is to be considered the value this is what is returned from selected value selected item would be the object containing that property which you bound to this setup is in place so you can bind an object to the combo box and show one value via the display member but have the underlying value be the property indicated by the value member property selected item will still return the entire object okay so this is important in most situations where you're not using value member selected item and selected value will return the same thing okay so now uh, you got some idea however i will show you in details as well so let's just uh, continue as selected item to string so now i am going to write the cases so currently this switch is going to take a string therefore i am going to write string cases and you can also define a default case which means if none of the other cases are satisfied conditions If none of the other cases are satisfied the default condition is executed then default then break so the first condition will be like this case and it will be a string therefore i'm going to write the cases as string so the case will be guest okay then when i type it, the case it is like if equal to then i am going to put a uh, like this and then i'm going to right break so uh, here 
I can do whatever I want. So when the value here, let's make it like this. And here. So the selected value will, if equal to guest, it will get into here. Okay. This can be multiple lines, as many as lines I want. Uh, so I will say, I will show with a message box show. So the message box will pop a, a message to the user. And after, until the user clicks OK, it will remain there. You have selected guest authority uh, and the level. Okay, I'm going to just uh, show two message box. Level of. Or let's make it like this. I will show you a better uh, way of doing the uh, switch case. Uh, message equal to like this so selected authority message will be guest out you have selected guest authority Okay. okay. This is also being still a copy paste unnecessary. So I'm going to add another uh, variable here. Select it out of the level. Uh, Uh, security level okay let's make two different variables so the first variable will be zero or one okay security level will be equal to uh, zero uh, okay so let's continue so when the value inside the switch is guessed as string it will get into here Okay, then it then the execution will break. So when the selected uh, value the string here is student, I'm going to set authority level two and the security level one. Okay, and then when it is assistant, okay, I'm going to set the level three and the security level three, and when you can do this with if and else's however this is much better approach than if and else's it is much easier to read more structured and if it is lecturer i'm going to set level five and five and i'm going to add admin and there will be this one okay let's make the admin level so let's make it nine and nine and by default i'm going to set them like this so the selected authority level is minus one and security level is minus one and after this what i'm going to do is i'm going to show the message to the user Cool. So I'm going to use dollar sign in front of it to be able to inline set the values. So authority title equal to what is the selected title here? And by the way, I'm going to do another thing. I'm going to make it like this. No. OK. 
Okay. And then, or let's make it no title selected. I'm going to add a new line with like this. And then, make it like this. Or I can make it like this as well. Let me show you. If I put an add character here, I can write it multiple lines. Okay. So it will continue to be a single line. And here, uh, selected authority uh, level equal to like this. And then move to the new line. Uh, selected authority security level will be equal to the, like this okay then with a semicolon I compose it then with a message box show method so this is actually calling show method of the message box class and message box class is coming from the system windows uh, class okay and it will show the message to the user and let's uh, run the application so we don't need this anymore since we didn't use this variable anywhere it is underlined okay so i'm going to put a breakpoint here so that we can know Okay, so currently I didn't select anything, but it is selected as a zero index. I'm going to click my button. So the selected value will be equal to select user authority level. And these are set to zero by default. You know, we, I don't have to set them like this because integers are by default zero. This is same as this. Okay, then I continue. And now it is going to get into switch. So the value of the switch case is this. Do we have this value in any case? No. So it will go to the default. Okay. Since none of the conditions are met, uh, it will go into the default case. Okay. So this is like capture all else. Okay. This is like. Okay, then, uh, okay, since I have changed the uh, uh, source code, I will rerun the application. All right, I click it and I will move here by clicking this. It will come it will run the execution until here okay it is here now so i am going i am setting the values and you see now it is going to break that means when break is called that switch uh, domain is ended it's the switch domain starting from here and ending here okay this is the uh, let's say the scope of the switch and the message is being composed as i want it is like this you see selected authority title authority level and security level then it will be displayed as a message box okay you see my message box has appeared and it is shown like this so it appears that uh, over and is not uh, used in message box it takes already the new lines of the string since this string is multiple lines it is displayed like this so i'm going to fix it okay let's see how we how will it look now okay 
So you see this is actually like this at the moment. I'm going to move this to here. Okay, so you see, since I have enabled wrap text, wrap, uh, it is getting wrapped according to my uh, available visibility. Okay, run the application again. And I didn't select anything. I click it OK. I will continue to execution. Okay, so the selected authority title equal to no title selected. Selected authority level equal to minus one and selected security level equal to minus one. However, you see they are not uh, at the same uh, uh, vertical, horizontal. Let's say it's they are not at the same uh, x axis. Okay. Uh, to make them starting point same, what can we do? Perhaps we can do it like this. Okay, and let's rerun the application. So now they are at the same level. Okay, yes, they are at the same level. However, they are not still starting from the very left if we change them like this i wonder will it make any difference yes it did make difference so if i make them like this i think they will start from the beginning of the message box like this yes okay so now let's try another selection this time i am going to try student okay so i'm going to make the student here and click our button so our selected value is now student so this is the to string of selected item and now it will directly go to the student case here you see now the values will be assigned and then it will be break then the message will be recomposed and the message box will show new values you see selected authority title is student selected authority level is two selected authority security level is one okay i'm going to remove breakpoint here and click continue so let's change it to the lecturer and you see the values are set according to the new uh, selection and uh, when i select admin it is set as that and when I select user authority level, it is like this. I can also add non-existing level. Let's make it super admin. So the super admin is not available here. And when I run it, okay, so I'm going to select lecturer. Okay, it is working as expected. I can click OK or X doesn't matter at the moment for this uh, in this occasion. However, in other codings, it may make difference. OK, and then I'm going to select Super Admin and click Show. You see now the default uh, values. I mean the default case assigned values are displayed, which are selected authority level is minus one and selected security level is minus one and the title is no title selected. This is displayed at the super admin and when I click, when I select nothing or the first case, which doesn't exist, okay, it shows the same. If I add another level like this, still it will be uh, handled by the default case. So whatever is not existing in the switch cases, it will display the default case it will go to the default case okay like this and if i remove default case it will show the default values here basically like that let's see what i mean uh, so the initial values are zero zero and the selected value 
so the new display means will be equal to zero zero and the selected uh, value you see select user authority level uh, super admin you see or heroic admin same this is how the switch case and message box works okay it is pretty simple yet effective solution uh, switch cases are much better than if else if else if else you you see i i could call this like this let's call it as if else so you will understand the difference i'm going to pause a moment okay so uh, now we have seen how to use switch uh, combo box and message box okay let's make some file reads and write operations and append operations so to do that i am going to add another combo box so we will get the idea better and this time i'm going to add numbers to it i'm going to name it as cmb uh, numbers count okay so i'm going to add write another method for it private void uh, init number counts combo box this is also taking no parameters because we don't need i'm going to add this time i'm going to add objects okay not just a uh, string you see it can take object and it adds item collection so as an object i am going to add let's uh, what can we do i'm going to look for an example because i didn't use a lot this so i'm not sure how to do okay binding source data source data source display member value member okay okay it is simple all right so first i'm going to compose a custom class uh, you will understand how to use classes uh, as we work on them uh, so you may not understand immediately classes are uh, let's find a formal definition okay and okay i think we can read this Declaring classes classes are declared by using the class keyword followed by a unique identifier, as shown in the following example. So the unique identifier is the name of the class, and there is the scope of the class, and there is access modifier, public void, and the class keyword. We will see all about them. The class keyword is preceded by the access level. Because public is used in this case, anyone can create instances of this class. 
The name of the class follows the class keyword. The name of the class must be a valid c -sharp identifier name. The remainder of the definition is the class body, where the behavior and data are defined. Fields, properties, methods, and events on a class are collectively referred to as class members. Okay, creating objects. Although they are sometimes used interchangeably, a class and an object are different things. A class defines a type of object, but it is not an object itself. An object is a concrete entity based on a class, and is sometimes referred to as an instance of a class. Objects can be created by using the new keyword followed by the name of the class that the object will be based on, like this. Okay, like this, as you can see. When an instance of a class is created, a reference to the object is passed back to the programmer. In the previous example, object 1 is a reference to an object that is based on customer. This reference refers to the new object but does not contain the object data itself. In fact, you can create an object reference without creating an object at all. Okay, so uh, the, uh, the further it gets uh, more advanced, we don't need them right now. So the public is the access modifier. That means uh, it can be accessed or used from everywhere. And uh, then we use the unique keyword class. Then we are going to define our class name. Uh, it is a unique uh, valid name in C sharp it has to be so I'm going to set it as uh, custom numbers okay and I'm going to set the scope of the class like this so you see class doesn't get this because this is used to initialize objects or call methods uh, here we are just defining an abstract model um i don't know maybe abstract model can be uh, misleading we are defining the structure of our uh, object we, we may call it like that so this class will have two variables both of them will be public as well uh, public sr uh, display name okay and by default i am going to set it as an a okay so you see i didn't set the type of it i'm going to set the type of it as like this and then it will have an integer value uh, number count or let's say number count by default i'm going to set as zero so this is my custom class now i can compose instances of this class and assign them to the list so i'm going to compose my list as like this my custom numbers okay so now this list is having my uh having objects uh as the custom numbers class we were we have seen here integer string in the previous lectures now same uh, as same as we are having custom custom numbers class instead of integers or strings nothing different now i am going to compose instances of uh, custom numbers class so each one will be an object custom numbers or let's make a custom number because it is not uh, plural first number okay and i'm going to set it as new keyword okay new you see it's automatically showing me custom number and like this uh, since this this uh, class doesn't have a constructor uh, it is composed it can be composed like this you see it doesn't take any parameters and i'm going to set the parameters myself since they are public i can set them and i'm going to set their uh, attribute value is like this 10 and first number uh, display name will be i'm going to change this as select uh, 
random number count okay i'm going to set it as um first level numbers uh count okay then i am going to add this to my list okay add this time it is going to take uh, an object uh, as custom number class okay so this is okay i have added it and to understand up to this i'm going to put a breakpoint and run it classes and methods are core of programming okay so you need to understand how to write a method how to write a class and how to use them this is really important it may be hard for you to understand okay at the moment i have no way to call this method so i'm going to uh, call it here it will be called after initialization of the uh, program the main window you see we are currently working under class of main window and it is inheriting from window class so we are always working under classes in c sharp everything you write is under a class okay since this is an object oriented based programming language and next year i am also lecturing object oriented programming so we depth we delve the depth into these uh, uh, concepts in the next year okay so uh, my uh, statement is here you see currently my list is null because list is also a type of uh, class it is an object therefore it is not initialized yet with the new keyword and it is null and then when i step over it is initialized and now it has zero items then i uh, initialize a comp compose uh, an object uh from type of custom number class you see currently it is null as well because its reference is only defined however it is not initialized yet okay now it is initialized it is you see it has the default values which are zero and the display name which i have set them here uh, so whenever an instance of an object is composed uh, the default values are assigned then I am setting the values myself. So now the number count is 10 and display name is first level number count. And then I am going to add it to my list. My list is currently uh, empty. And now it contains my list. Okay. So uh, I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to compose another instance. Default number or I'm going to add it to the list as well. Okay, so this will default. You see, I am not changing the values of these objects to add them again. Because if I do that, they would all get the same value. Each time I'm going to, to define another instance. Okay, this time I'm going to define this instance like this. Let me show you. Second number is equal to new. Uh, custom number and you see i have opened uh, the scope of it by curly brackets and now i can set the values when i hit spacebar it shows me the available uh, fields to be available fields that can be set uh, at the in at the initialization of the object so the number count will be let's say 50 and then i put a comma and when i hit the spacebar it shows me the second field that i can set and it will be second level uh, number count and then i'm going to uh, end the initialization with a semicolon like this now i'm then i'm going to add it to my list second number so if I run the application until here, I can uh, debug and look the values and composite objects.
Okay, so now my list has three items. The first item is the, has these values. It is an object uh, at the type of uh, custom number class. And the second uh, object has these values, 10 and these. And the third object has these values. Okay. So then I am going to compose another uh, number like this. This time I'm going to directly compose a new instance like new. You see it is automatically telling me to compose uh, an object from this class because the list is composed from that class, you see. And when I hit spacebar, it shows me and then I'm going to define the set the values directly like this equal to let's say 300 and the display name let's say uh, third level number count okay now i have shown you every case i'm going to add another case so you can get more idea of it this time i'm just going to add a new instance like this and to set its values i'm going to use this method uh, last so this will get the last added object and from here you see now I am able to set them because the last method will return me the last object inside this list then I will be able to access uh, fields of that uh, object I'm going to set it like uh, 1000 and I'm going to set its uh, display name as uh, ultimate level number count okay before adding this I want to show you another way like this so this time I'm going to use index how can I use index to access it, the current last object from index I can use it like this count minus one this is the last index currently in the list okay so let's set it as uh, 750 and let's set it as uh, fourth level okay so i have shown you every way of composing objects and adding them to the list this way i am accessing the last object of the list because the index starts from zero however when you count it uh, the first object is counted as one therefore uh, count minus one gives you the last index of the list or arrays okay so let's run the application until here and see our uh, objects and their values so that I can verify to move to the next step. Okay, now I have six objects and their values are like this. Okay, it works. Then I am going to assign this list to my uh, combo box. Okay, CMB box number count items source. Okay, you see there is item source and item source gets and i uh enumerable uh, collection so i'm going to set it like this or let's check the object uh, example example was here from example we can uh, make it easier okay i think i will just copy paste binding source let's say custom numbers okay you see it shows me you i am missing a namespace and i'm going to apply okay there's abstractions hmm. maybe there's an easier way like this okay this looks better option okay Data source display member. Okay, so I'm going to use our number count data source. Okay, it doesn't have data source. 
Hmm. Yeah, problem. The item source will work. It will be LST custom numbers. Okay, it's working nice. So display number and okay, it doesn't have display. Okay, display member path. For display member path, I'm going to give the field name of the display member. So this will be displayed to the uh, user and the value member. So for value member, okay, it gets selected value path. Okay, like this. So the value path will be like this. I'm not sure will if this will work or not, but we will. Uh, test and try you see as a as a being software engineering you don't have to memorize everything you don't have to know everything you just need to be able to search and find what you are looking for okay that is the core concept of being a good software engineer okay i'm running the application okay and when i click okay it is not working it is not working right now so the solution we have made is not working i wonder why okay so let's let's look to of uh, uh, attributes and fields of uh, our combo box so has items true or it has items okay there's input bindings i think it is false okay there's item binding group it is null there is items okay items are bound there is six items there is item source okay okay so we have problem with the display path i think selected value selected value path okay it is displayed as null so okay display member path is also incorrect such as name all right this is not working <laughs> why why is that okay mm, let's let's look for this on the internet session dpf display member path okay someone has asked about this mm. okay someone has made an example There is name, value, Okay, what it is not working. Why item source? String and this is also string. It 
It is supposed to be working right now, but it is not. Interesting. Expert. Maybe it is because of X. Uh, yeah, maybe we need item binding. Input bindings. Maybe we need like this. Okay, it's not working. Binding group. It is not working. Items, item binding group. It is not working. Okay, item templates, I think format. Item source. Why our method is not working? This is weird. When I run the application, it should work, but it is not working for some reason. You see, uh, a great deal of uh, being a good software, software engineer is also uh finding the errors problems problems you are encountering so currently we are trying to solve a problem uh, uh, our approach is not working however it should be working so it is get or set and we are setting it This is exactly as we are doing, however, our uh, thing is not working for some reason. Display member path and it is not working. Let's remove this and try again. Hmm. May it be because this is not um, global variable and it is getting lost but it shouldn't be let's try again okay still not working okay it is not working and i wonder why Oh, I see. Okay, okay. So we have used fields here. However, we have to use. Guess what? Okay. From our previous lectures. Uh, did I show you them? I'm not sure. So I will be just checking. Fields. 
Okay, we didn't show. Okay, so. So these are fields, and instead of fields, we have to use uh, attributes. What I mean is prop. Uh, you see, this is now being a property. I mean properties. And I'm going to copy paste it, and I'm going to set a default value. like this so i'm converting field into a property properties are different than fields so let's uh, uh, show you the example properties expose fields Fields should almost always be kept private to a class and accessed via get and set properties. Properties provide a level of abstraction allowing you to change the fields while not affecting the external way they are accessed by the things that use your class. Okay, this is some uh, more advanced stuff for now. However, when we type our uh, variable like this, so I'm going to type prop and it is code snippet top top and this it is integers so this will be by default zero and i but i'm going to set it zero for you as well or let's make it one okay so now i have converted my uh, properties into the fields i mean fields into the uh, properties so you see this property has five references it shows the references of this property okay and now it should work Okay, now they are available. And I am going to set the default index. Uh, selected index equal to zero. Okay, now we have uh, two different combo boxes. I mean, same combo box, but one of them only contains uh, string, and the other one contains objects. These are objects from what type? These are from type of uh, custom numbers okay so okay let's i'm going to write the lecture seven context uh one minute so that i can know what we have uh, see so far okay Right hot, hot compose methods and call them. So how did we compose simple methods? We have compose simple method like this private void and private void and such. So these are simple methods. Uh, custom class how to use fields and uh, let's say how to compose properties inside custom class uh, how to compose a list uh, that contains items uh, from custom class or let's say objects items how to use VPF and combo box, how to use, how to bind uh, VPF combo box to a, a list of custom class objects, how to set display Yeah. So this is like a recap of um, what we have seen so far in this particular lecture. It is useful for you as well. And it was here. How to set display member path of 
combo display uh, sorting properties of a custom class object okay this should be uh, descriptive enough and value is how to use uh, switch case by the way i was going to show you uh, how to write this switch case as if else's uh, i just remembered it so i'm going to uh, show you that for a moment in a moment How to use message box. So, okay. All right. So let's first write this switch case F as if and else's. And okay, I'm going to write it like this. If uh, value is equal to uh, guest okay then i'm going to define the scope of the if like this then as okay and then if value is equal to student then the value is like this okay and then uh, else if uh, value is assistant and uh, then the scope like this we continue with if and else and lecturers and else if it is uh, admin then the scope like this and then else so with this way we can have if else if else if else if else and at the end else the last else will be the default case and it will be entered uh, when all other values are all other conditions are not satisfied okay Okay, and let's write it. Okay. beginning okay so this is the multi-line string and with the dollar value i am able to use inline uh, value settings like this so i can set values in line like this if I, when i use dollar okay okay we have set the default index zero uh, okay okay so what i'm going to do is i am going to compose a certain number of uh, numbers randoms and write them to a file and this uh, number count will be taken from 
user from here okay so let's uh, update the definition here I'm going to add a value to end of uh, these strings as like this well, let's make it like okay let's make it easier like this and oh i'm going to make it like this one second last and Oh, let's make it for loop so you will understand better. Okay, before I s oh, mm, okay, we have assigned the item source here. So if I change the value of, of this list after this assignment, will it work? Will it, will it affect the uh, values displayed in the combo box? Yes, of course it will. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to iterate each object inside this list. Okay. And I'm going to uh, modify the uh, displayment values like this equal to I plus uh, dollars. And here I'm going to add a value by the way i have to set display name uh, attribute as uh, this so it will display uh, the uh, number counts uh, as well If these parts uh, gets you as too fast, please stop the uh, video, type yourself, try yourself and try to debug yourself and try to understand. Okay, so you see now I am able to see the numbers, the values of each object. I can also format them with a thousand separator like this to string. So instead of modifying each uh, value here, I just loop it through the uh, list and updated values in that loop. So I have avoided writing unnecessary extra code. Okay, so now the numbers will be formatted. You see, now this has thousand separator here. Okay, so uh, with this another button, we are going to compose random numbers and write them to a file right uh, or let's say file okay so this is the descriptive okay So this method, uh, uh, this button uh, will uh, generate certain numbers of uh, certain count of random numbers, and this count will be uh, will be uh, get from uh, this combo box. So in the first uh, button click, we have used uh, selected item to string. Okay, here. So if we use this for our new combo box, let's see what will we get. Okay. And when I uh, use it like this. Okay, so I'm going to select this one and click. Okay, you see the selected value is displayed like this. Lecture 7, main window, 
plus custom number. You see, this is not useful for me. I need the value of that uh, selected item. So, selected item will not work for me in this case. In this case, it was working because the selected because the items of the combo box were, were all strings. Okay. However, objects. So what I need to do is this time I'm going to use it like this. Value. Well, I know that it is integer. Therefore, count selected uh, value. So this is by default an object, therefore I have to convert it. And I wonder if will this work. Yeah, this is working. So I am inherently uh, defining uh, the type of the object. Okay. Or let's say this is explicitly. So this is equal to convert into the key. Well, let, let's let me show you what I mean. So this is equal to this. Okay. Okay, so you also being you also learning this. So let's uh, run the application again and see the read value. Okay, I'm going to select this and click. So the first is like this, and let's see the second. Okay, this is equal to 50 because the selected value is the value we did set uh, here. You see, this is the value and we have defined the value uh, here. So the value is equal to this one. I can add uh, more uh, attributes or fields to this uh, class. However, the value is will be always this because I am setting the value here. So this uh, attribute e ir number count will be always the value of the combo box. Okay, now that I have the value, I am going to uh, generate uh, that many random numbers. So I am going to define a random. Okay. So the round is, I mean, random is a class. Okay. And what we are going to do is, uh, we are going to write. uh the generated numbers to the uh, a text file how can i do that i can use different uh, file operations and
Okay. Okay. And so I am going to show you uh, the file operations uh, in this lecture. Uh, so to use file operations, we need to have uh, IO uh, library using syst uh, using system dot IO IO namespace. So the IO namespace is used for input and output. So I have added it here. Therefore, now I can use file operations file dot write all text write all whites write lines and such okay so uh, did i show you the string builder okay we didn't see it yet okay so let's go with the basic way so i'm going to make a for loop that will be equal to the uh, selected value so if we select 50 the loop will be 50 and during this loop this loop we are going to uh, generate uh, numbers and write them to a file how we are going to do that is first i will compose um, all the uh, numbers and append them to a string and then write it at all at once so let's write more methods. Okay, so this will be the signal string method. I'm going to call it. Okay, this method will take uh, integer as an input. Int are um, random number count okay so you see now it is giving me an error I am not able to call this method like this I was able to call the other methods we have written we have composed uh, like this however I am not able to call this method like this because it is expecting an argument from me what argument this argument okay so i have to provide an integer value to this method call i'm going to uh, provide selected value and i'm going to change the name so uh, i will compose a string uh, let's say sr random numbers equal to this and at each loop i am going to set it like this equal to uh, my random next so the next will generate a non-negative random integer okay and two string so it will get a format like this okay and i am also going to write the index of the uh, string let's make it index and dollar i and i'm going to add a top character or let's say double top okay and let's put a uh, this here and i'm going to add append them so this is uh, sitting concatenation sitting appending and at the end i'm going to add a new line so to do that i can add like this okay, this will be a new line and i'm going to write them to a file file write all text so write all text takes an input uh, uh, takes a string as input and a path uh, as an input so the first uh, input of write all text is the path so the path will be the method name i'm using and i'm going to make the extension of the file as txt and you see it is asking me the content then i can provide encoding 
you may have seen the encoding when you are watching a movie and you are using a subtitle so the encoding of the uh, text file uh, defines the available characters that you can write to a text uh, let me show you what I mean simply with uh, Notepad++ so I'm going to set the encoding as ANSI okay so in ANSI you don't have the special characters so when I type the Turkish special characters like this okay and when I save it I'm going to save it as uh, let's say let's save it to our uh, folder not here lecture 7 let's make it ANSI encoding okay, I have saved it and let's open it from here I'm going to open it with a, a notepad okay it is working uh, this is interesting oh it is working but the uh, characters are changed so I am typing I am not able to type uh, Turkish characters okay that is why it is working so I'm going to type it like this R -E -U -U. okay Ç -ö -ü. okay and Ç okay so I'm going to say okay you see it is showing me an error it says this file contains characters in unicode format which will be lost if you save the file as an ANSI encoded text file to keep the unicode form information click cancel below then select one of the unicode options from encoding drop down list continue i'm going to, i'm going to save okay so uh, when i open it like this you see the characters are gone okay now the special characters are gone okay and let's reload it let's say i'm going to uh, encode it as utf8 so you see now those characters are displayed differently i'm going to uh, change uh, the encoding now i have changed the encoding i'm going to save as as uh, utf8 encoding takes the now when i open it with notepad okay you see now it is working if i save it as answer version 2 okay you see there is a encoding i'm going to set it as anti save okay you see it is converting those characters into the english uh, versions okay so this is about encoding by default the encoding is utf8 i be, i believe okay let's see the default encoding Okay, so by default in C sharp, <sighs> let's find the default encoding if we don't provide anything. Okay, yes, yeah, someone has asked it so the default encoding is utf8 i believe oh it depends on your computer's local settings okay so to be sure we can provide encoding as well i will provide it in a moment uh, random numbers so this is the string content okay then let's provide the encoding as encoding uh, I think it should let us select automatically. 
Okay, like this. All right. So let's uh, go step by step and see how our algorithm is working. Okay, so I'm going to select uh, count 10 for now. Okay, first, and then I'm going to click our button. Okay, our value is read, then it will call uh, our method right as a single string. So this is writing all the string uh, at once. So to get into this method, I am going to click uh, step into. If I click step over, it will just execute the method. Let me show you. And it will be uh, already executed. When I open the debug folder uh, from here, you see our uh, text file already composed. And you see the files are already, the numbers are already written. So let's continue and uh, re-execute. Okay, I'm clicking again. This time, oh, I have passed. Let's continue. And let's re-click. And this time I will click here. Okay, so this will generate a random object from a random class. Okay, our object is composite. It is from system.random. And our setting is initialized as empty then how many times the loop will continue it will loop through uh, until uh, counter is 10 so 10 times so okay so currently our string is empty then when i click step over you see now it is becoming like this when i uh, continue looping so it is becoming like this when i continue looping uh, it is becoming like this and when I continue like until here so I can see it like this this is the string and it is reading at once with write all text to the uh, text file okay you see it's updated so this is how I write to the text file with at once with write all text so let's make another uh, let's uh, make example from another methodology so write as uh, lines this time okay every this time our uh, content uh, modified is changing to list string okay lsd lines this is the lowest performance because uh, string concatenation is the slowest one each time when you concatenate string it generates a new string object so this consumes a lot of cpu let me type this correctly. Okay, like this. Okay, concatenate, concatenate, okay. Okay. Okay, so this is the worst way of doing string concatenate. So this time we are going to use a list method. I'm going to add uh, this to the list. This time I don't need to provide new line. Okay. And I'm going to use write all lines. Okay. Let's give another name to the text file. You see write all lines takes uh, an uh, enumerable object. It can be listed. It can be array, okay. So I'm going to provide this. Then I can provide encoding as well. Okay, I'm going to remove all the breakpoints and I'm going to put a breakpoint here. And I'm going to write that here. 
I have to provide the numbers as well. Let's write uh, 50 numbers this time. Okay. Okay, I'm going to execute. So we are generating our list, you see. This, like this. Okay, let's execute until here. okay so you see count is 50 all the numbers are generated and uh, it will be written to the file at once as all lines when i you see currently it is not here when i execute this line of code okay, it is now here and when i open it i will see the fifth numbers generated random numbers okay so this was another method and okay let's continue as right as or let's say append text right as append text okay so this time we are going to append text text append is more like this method okay and uh, this time we don't need this to append we are going to use this file that append text this is also very low performance because each time uh, when you are appending a text it will open the text file lock it and then close it okay so this is an io operation this is also very poor performance okay okay so this will be append text therefore i have to add the new line like this this time i will use environment new line okay this is the same as uh, slash over r and slash over n and when file append text i will also set the encoding okay and file append text oh it seems like there is no file append text okay so this will be equal to write all text okay this will work as write all text however there will be a difference what difference there will be uh, so let's provide the path txt and coding encoding okay right all text no this is not working stream writer file string path okay yeah i can use file write all append all text okay so okay what other options there are link pad content okay so append will add text to the end of the text uh, the difference is this will overwrite the previous i mean this will overwrite the previous file
file uh, I will show you what I mean uh, all, right. all text let's, let's uh, text thing. okay so let's uh, execute them by line uh, line by line each line okay let's continue okay and okay so currently let's delete these two previous files okay no files let's execute by each line so file append text composed a text file because it wasn't exist and written the uh, first generated number like this uh, with the name of write as append text then write all text will also compose a file because it doesn't exist then write the text like this okay so uh, you see they have different numbers because we each time we have uh, call it the random next method and let's continue execution so append text will append uh, the new text to the existing file you see it's continuing like this and let's see what happens to write all text okay so when i reload the write all text you see the index zero is gone because the previous file is overridden it is lost forever okay let's continue to another iteration and let's reload the files you see the index one is also gone so it is it has overridden the entire file however in this case it is appended as you can see okay this is the uh, append text uh, version reverse file all right and further any other way right all whites we don't need them right all lines okay we have seen them this is a different thing right all text this is also different thing okay this is file stream okay i will show you streamlining as well and show you the difference so You see, currently this method does not exist, so I'm going to make it exist. Okay. Okay. So when we are using stream method, it is a bit different. This time, uh, we are opening a stream. During the stream is open, that file is locked only read only okay so let's make it file mm, uh, open right okay here let's give a path okay write a stream takes the text this will return as a as a our um, return back a file stream like this then i can you see there are right okay it's right byte offset count or yeah this is something different we don't need this i'm going to use a stream method not the file stream let's make it stream writer it's our writer go to new stream rider uh, 
not a pint. Uh, no a pint text. You see there is uh, encoding features. Okay, I can provide stream string path. So far I have provided on the string string path. I can provide stream and encoding. I can provide string path append. I can provide encoding encoding buffer size. I can provide append encoding. So I will just provide encoding for this one. Okay, encoding dot UTF eight. Okay. Oh, I have to provide the boolean value as well. So append will be false. I can also define it like this. So make it easier readable. Okay. So these are the three uh, values it is getting. Then I'm going to make another version. As a wider append. Okay. So during the stream writer is open, the file will be locked. Okay. I will show you what I mean. And during the uh, random numbers, we are going to use like this. Uh, write. You see, I can use write. It writes character. I can use write line. I can use... Uh, oh, by the way, write takes so many values. It can be bool. It can be... Decimal, double, float, long, object, string, string, builder, whatever. So many formats. So I'm going, I'm just going to write lines. Okay, let's use this. And I'm going to use write line. So it will write a line each time. So I don't need to write a new line. Okay, and uh, I'm going to use another one as well. Let's call our method here. Okay, we are calling it. Let's delete all other uh, breakpoints. Okay, they are deleted. Okay, and let's delete these two. I'm running the application. Okay. then i'm holding the button okay so currently no uh, text is composite for this method these were composed from previous methods method calls so the first stream writer is open it as you can see it has composed a new file however this file is currently locked so i can't for example cut it and paste it to another place like let's say here but i will get an error you see this action the action cannot be completed because the file is open in lecture 7 okay so during the uh, uh, stream writer the file is opened and locked okay this is a difference of uh, stream writer and when i continue to next line the other file will be also open it and then execute to each writing okay i have executed them and when i open them you see they are empty okay both of them are empty however i have called it uh, right line so why they are empty because the dream writer uh, writes the cage uh, whenever it wants or let's say automatically based on the uh, algorithms of uh, .NET Framework and c -Shot. What can I do to make it right? Okay, I have uh, closed the application and 
you see they are still empty so my writing is gone forever i have lost data in this case to prevent it i can use this flush this is this will flush the cage after each writing okay however this is not very uh, performance wise okay let's try again now You can also let the uh, .NET framework to handle writing. It will eventually write when everything is done. Uh, however, you can be, you can, if you want to make sure that it is always written uh, immediately and no data is lost. Okay, you have to flush it every time like this. Okay, so uh, let's check the file. I'm going to delete all of them. Only one of them will be locked, okay. And you see uh, it's empty. Okay, currently which one is uh, executed? Okay, no append is executed. Okay, it is empty. And when I move to the next line, so after flush command is executed, uh, it will be reloaded okay you see it is written however the message is incorrect because uh, we don't provide the name of the file we just provide the string content and okay nothing else uh, okay same as here Okay, I'm going to delete every breakpoints and put a breakpoint here. Delete these two. Let's run it again. Uh, Streamlighter is also very performance wise. It doesn't uh, use a lot of RAM as well. Okay, so let's open the file. So oh, this one is the no attempt. You see it is empty. And when I move to the next line. Okay, you see now it is written. Okay, same here. And when I open it, I will see it is written. So even if I close the application now, I will have no data loss. Okay. However, this is not very performance wise. Instead, what can we do? Okay, instead of flush, what can we do? Uh, we can use auto flush. Okay. So uh, let's compose another uh, streamliners. So I will make them as auto flush. I will name them as auto flush. So no appends, auto flush. And let's add them like this. Oh, up and auto flush and this one so to set them auto flush i have to set them auto flush like this equal to true this is by default false by the way therefore i have to set them manually to true and let's see i'm going to delete all the files run the application Uh, when these objects are initialized, uh, these text files are composed if they are not existing or they are overwritten based on your uh, 
initialization. Okay, so let's open the uh, no append auto flush here. Okay, it is empty. And after I write it, let's see if it will flush or not. Yes, it is automatically flushed. Auto flush is not uh, forcibly flushing every time. Uh, it decides flush it more frequently though. Uh, let's let's check the full description. Okay, it says it can be machine translation. Oh, by the way, it was calling every time gets or sets a value indicating whether the stream writer will flush its buffer to the underlying stream after every call to write char. Flushing the stream will not flush its underlying encoder unless you explicitly call flush or close. Setting auto flush to true means that data will be flushed from the buffer to the stream after each write operation, but the encoder state will not be flushed. This allows the encoder to keep its state partial characters so that it can encode the next block of characters correctly. This scenario affects UTF-8 and UTF-7 where certain characters can only be encoded after the encoder receives the adjacent character or characters. When auto flush is set to false, Streamwriter will do a limited amount of buffering, both internally and potentially in the encoder from the encoding you passed in. You can get better performance by setting auto flush to false, assuming that you always call close or at least flush when you're done writing with a Streamwriter. Okay, this is important. This is important. You can get better performance by setting auto flush to false, assuming that you always call close or at least flush when you're done writing with a stream writer. For example, set auto flush to true when you are writing to a device where the user expects immediate feedback. Console, out is one of these cases, the stream writer used internally for writing to console flushes all its internal state except the encoder state after every call to stream writer, right? Okay, so now you get the idea. So the auto flush is almost as equal to flush. It is better. Uh, so for more information related, auto flush here, okay. So what is the difference of uh, append false and append true? Let me show you that as well. Okay, let's make append true, true. Uh, let's run the application. Let's delete this. Okay. So I will call 50. Okay, one time I have called them. They are written. Let's open the append. Let's select all uh, previous ones. Okay, I'm closing them. Okay, I have opened the stream as append. And I am going to open uh no event okay so they are both written they are uh, written after the method call however these files are still locked because i didn't close them oh by the way they are not interesting so it it appears that yeah after this method execution is ended, uh, the system has closed and deleted this streamliner. Okay. However, I should have called the close myself. It would be better. Because when you call the close, it will flush its cage. Okay. So let's type one down by. 
By the way, for an easier way, I can do this because these are reference types and we will see more about them in future. So I'm going to make it like this. My, my riders equal to, let's give their names here, here, uh, here. And here, so this list will basically hold uh, addresses of these uh, stream riders. Okay, not actually them, but a pointer to them. And when I do a for each, uh, we are uh, riders. I can just uh, close them. Okay, like this. So each VR rider will be equal to uh, one of these. Let's let's see them with a for each. Okay, so the first one is equal to. We can know it's uh, which one it is from. I think. Uh, from the text, uh, okay, one second. Uh, okay, one moment. Okay, so when I hover my mouse uh, over the uh, VR writer and check the uh, base stream. I can see which rider it is. So this first one is ride as stream no append. Okay. Okay. So this is this one. The first one is obviously. And let's continue. So the first one is now closed. I can see it from here. And when I click the base stream, uh, you see it is all false, 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 false because it is closed. So the second one will be the second stream. As obviously and I can close all of them okay okay so the difference of append and no append you see the no append each time writes overwrites the previous one and let's see the append you see it is getting expanded now the append has uh, 60 items however no append has only 10 items because the previous file is overridden okay uh, until they are closed i am not, i will not be able to uh, move the uh, text files because they will be uh, open by the streamliners like this it will give me an error however after this method execution is done uh, their reference will be lost because they are they will be live in this scope. Okay, the scope is starting here and ending here. After that, they will be uh, garbage collected uh, by the .NET framework. These are all future stuff, so don't get confused with them. And let's uh, note our latest uh, doings. You see, it is getting bigger. Okay, we, I think we have uh, shown every kind of uh, uh, text writing. So we have shown um, file write all text. And file write all lines. And uh, file append all text. And by the way file append as text also keeps the previous text as you can see so the append doesn't uh, delete or overwrite the previous file okay and uh, steam writer okay steam writer uh, with 
apparent or not apparent flush to flush okay so these are the file writing operations and depending on your situation you can pick each of them uh, so let's say you are going to write millions of lines uh, in that case the dream writer would be your best approach or let's say you are going to write 100,000 lines and you have enough memory you can use write all lines method uh, at once or you can keep all the uh, text in a memory and you can use write all text depending on your uh, situation your computer uh, you can use uh the one you want okay so we have seen combo box message box case file read write append steam write okay so these are uh, left and I think I will show this at the next lecture. Because it has been already a too long uh, lecture. Or oh, let's let's show the read as well. So these were writings how do we read them how can we read them uh, let's make read as well did i miss anything i wonder uh, closing is always a good option good approach or programming uh, cultures okay let's make example of file reading examples okay so did we see list box okay we haven't seen yet okay and let's compose the click event so i will show you each uh, way of reading we can read entire file as a text equal to file read all text okay this will read the entire file into the uh, an uh, object in this case it will it will be a string uh, let's for example read uh, the biggest file this one okay it has 70 lines and i'm providing the name then I can also provide the encoding or it may it can get the encoding itself automatically uh, it depends on you I will I will provide encoding myself or I won't provide encoding or let's provide it so this is a better practice of coding UTF-8 this will compose a string so let's make it string we will understand better so this read the entire text okay then I'm going to use uh, file read lines method. So this will be as version 2. Equal to this one. And to do that, I will do for each uh, file read lines. Okay. This will read the file uh, line by line. So each line will be read at every iteration 
and it will be string sr line and I will just append the each line uh, to the uh, text okay then uh, okay what is wrong here okay and then I will read all lines like this let me show you version 3 the version 3 will be all lines this returns array therefore I have to make it list okay like this then I can compose the uh, version 3 like this string dot join so the separator will be uh, like this and line okay and I will note this as well okay we don't need this anymore okay these will lock the file until this line is ex executed this operation ends okay so it will open the file i'm not sure it is locking or not yeah it opens and then closes the file therefore it is locking i guess Probably this is not locking the file and this is also locking the file because it then closes the file. Okay. Then there is another method. Uh, let's make it as well. It is read all text read lines. Okay, we have seen them. Uh, the last method is stream reader okay stream reader uh, s, s read reader new stream reader and i can provide uh, the file path and encoding and uh, are there anything else no okay so i will provide encoding and uh, file path like this so the stream reader will do nothing after, until i read each of them so while uh, as i read uh, let's say or true line equal to uh, as i reader uh okay there are several ways there are read to end read line okay first let's read the line entire line read to end equal to read to end then uh, i have to close it uh close then i will reopen like this this time I will use uh, okay um, like this. So you see, I am uh, composing a new instance of that stream reader with new keyboard. Um, while so the read line uh, returns string. Okay while true uh, equal to uh, read line 
Uh, okay, it says it will return null. Therefore, I have to make it like this. Uh, if string is null or empty equal to true I will break the while loop because it will loop forever if I don't do that if not I will just add it okay so I can we can also add it to our here okay okay so we have shown every way of uh, reading file let's uh, run each of them to see by the way we didn't add a new line here so it will be different than other ones let's see i'm getting okay so the first entire file is read like this there is an empty string at the end probably then let's see the second one okay here let's see the third one okay there is no empty line at the end of the third one okay you see it doesn't have an empty line at the uh, at the end let's see the fourth okay there is also an empty line at the end and let's see the five okay with the five there is no new lines okay so this is like appending string string concatenation so these are all the reading ways which one is most uh, efficient probably read all text is the most efficient read lines uh, is a good one if you have millions of lines to read so you can read each line by line and do your operation read all lines is also pretty efficient you can also do stream reader it can, it this is probably similar to the uh, read lines in terms of performance these are all your options depending on your situation you can use each of them okay so uh, we have shown how to use Uh, okay read all text and read lines okay and read all lines uh, stream readers and read line read to end and and okay read line okay so these are the everything uh, this is the end of the lecture i have posted uh, the project details on github it is important for you to read it uh, at least two times uh, since you are at your first year of the school i have uh, prepared it uh, in turkish and english here okay please read this file at least two times and if you have any questions you can ask in our um, discord channel uh, so everyone can read your question and get my answer to your question so it wouldn't be ask it again and again we will see the things i want you at your homework okay don't worry about that we have still seven weeks of uh uh, lectures uh, so okay seems like I have left the channel uh, so I'm going to rejoin it okay 
Okay, so where you are going to ask your question is, let me show you. Okay, you are going to join introduction to programming with one and you should ask your questions here. So I will read your question and answer that. Okay. And I am looking for volunteers to our subtitle project here. If you be a volunteer, uh, it would be both good for you and uh, for us, of course. So the lecture seven will be availing volunteer. Okay, and end of lecture. Thank you very much. Uh, let's upload our today's uh, source code. You should also learn how to use Git page and GitHub. It will be very useful for you. Okay, we have uploaded as well. Uh, thank you for watching, liking and sharing. And uh, hopefully see you next week.